Chicago's South Loop neighborhood has been the site of many major historical events and a primary entry point to America's Midwestern metropolis. In its role as the center of transportation, commerce, events, and activity, the South Loop has had a primary role in Chicago's film history. As America's second city and the nation's railroad transportation hub, Chicago was often highlighted in newsreels and industrial films, not only because of its strategic location, but because of its culture, commerce, and innovation. At the center of the city and close to the train stations that dominated interstate freight transport, the South Loop was the primary location for the film depositories that stored and distributed films of all kinds to the palatial movie houses throughout the city. Chicago also had a leading national role in radio, vaudeville, music, nightclub, and early television entertainment. The first confirmed commercial exhibition of a film in Chicago took place on July 5th, 1896 at the Hopkins Theater at 531 South State Street, now the site of the University Center College Dorm Complex between Congress and Harrison. The films showed scenes of New York City's Herald Square, a boxing match, and a short film called Picture of a Kiss. By the 1920s, Chicago was famous for some of the most opulent movie palaces in the world, and the South Loop was the headquarters for the film depository warehouses that distributed the films around the city and the region, thanks to the confluence of train stations and its central location convenient to smaller cities and towns. Simple-to-use amateur film cameras became available to the public in the late 1920s, just in time for the 1933 World's Fair in Chicago's South Loop. Dozens of visitors filmed the Century of Progress World's Fair site in 1933 and 1934, which stretched from Roosevelt Road and Lakeshore Drive down to 35th Street with attractions and exhibits on the mainland and northerly island. A sky ride transported fairgoers on gondolas 200 feet in the air over what is now Burnham Harbor from just east of Soldier Field to Northerly Island. The fair site included attractions for every age and interest. The fair made a tidy profit and attracted hundreds of thousands of tourists to Chicago during two of the most difficult years of the Great Depression. In 1947, director Henry Hathaway, influenced by the spate of Italian neorealist films in the mid-1940s, took his cameras to Chicago to film the gritty, noirish Call Northside 777, starring Jimmy Stewart, Lee J. Cobb, and Richard Conte, and based on a true story, Call Northside 777 tracked a newspaper reporter's search through the underbelly of working-class Chicago to absolve a man wrongly convicted of murder. In this scene, Jimmy Stewart climbs out of the former Harrison Street subway station at Polk and State on the south end of what was then one of Chicago's Skid Row and Burlesque strips. This subway entrance is now covered by concrete at 767 South State Street. Later, Stewart turns the corner onto 8th Street from State Street and walks along 8th Street towards Wabash Avenue. The tower of the Dearborn Station is visible in the background over the low railroad maintenance buildings as he enters a bar at 15 East 8th Street looking for clues. Director Alfred Hitchcock's 1959 thriller North by Northwest is most remembered for the famous scene of Cary Grant being chased into an Indiana cornfield by a crop dusting plane. The Chicago locations for the film featured several shots of the interior of the LaSalle Street station built in 1903 and demolished in 1983. The old LaSalle Street station was the terminus for the famous luxury train, the 20th Century Limited, that ran daily between New York and Chicago. The scene of the arrival in Chicago featured a walk by Grant, disguised as a red cap, and co-star Eva Marie Saint on the station's platform that stretched over Harrison Street and Congress Parkway. The platform is one of the few remnants of the old station that remains from 1983, although it's been updated and restored. 
1968, Chicago cinematographer and director Haskell Wexler made a groundbreaking film integrating the action surrounding the 1968 Democratic National Convention into a feature film drama called Medium Cool. The film told the story of a local Chicago TV reporter's budding relationship with a single mother and her young son living in Chicago's uptown neighborhood. With the swirling climate of Chicago's late 60s anti-war demonstrations and racial tension as a backdrop. Wexler's camera filmed the actors walking amid actual demonstrations and mayhem during the convention, much of it centered in the South Loop, chronicling the events in a mixture of drama and documentary. This scene shows the efforts of police and the National Guard to block the path of the protesters attempting to march to the convention site. The police cut off the protesters at the St. Charles Airline elevated railroad tracks parallel to 16th Street near Michigan Avenue. Another famous scene in the film catches the firing of a tear gas canister with a film crew member audibly warning the director, Look out, Haskell, it's real. Beginning in 1979, most famously with director John Landis's multi-million dollar love letter to the Chicago blues scene, The Blues Brothers, Chicago actively sought out film productions to come to the city for location shooting. The Chicago Film Office and the Illinois Film Office brought dozens of films to Chicago in the 1980s, taking advantage of the urban locations and highly trained actors and production crews. These films included notable Hollywood features such as My Bodyguard, The Hunter, Bad Boys, Risky Business, Code of Silence, The Big Town, About Last Night, Ordinary People, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Next of Kin, and The Untouchables. Chicago became a major filming location in the 1980s for many reasons, not the least of which was the gritty industrial atmosphere and awe-inspiring architecture of Chicago at a time when the manufacturing jobs were fleeing to the suburbs and abroad. Chicago also had the advantage of an extensive theater community to provide actors of every type with secondary roles, some of whom later became stars in their own right. The vacant buildings and well-preserved architecture also made Chicago a convenient location for period films. 1980s TV shows shot in Chicago included Crime Story and Lady Blue. In the 1990s, the pace of filming slowed as other cities sought to replicate the success of Chicago. But in the late 1990s, tax incentives and African-American filmmakers again revitalized location shooting in Chicago with films like Love Jones, Candyman, Barbershop, Soul Food, Stir of Echoes, The Dark Knight, and The Transformers. The advent of prolific location shooting in Chicago provided hundreds of jobs for actors, directors, cinematographers, costume designers, production assistants, and all sorts of entertainment-related professionals, many of whom got their training at Columbia College's highly regarded film school in the South Loop. From the moment the first film was shown in Chicago, over a century ago, through its role as a central film distribution location, to its part in dozens of feature films, to its role in training the artists that make the films of the present and the future, the South Loop has had a starring role in Chicago's film legacy.